I'm Van. I'm Sorry. That's Booby. And this is Julpy. <laughs> You'll notice he's a he's a combination of Culpy who died and Jay who hooked us up with the awesome lights. Yeah, this is like a Super Saiyan. Culpy. It's it's uh pretty badass. Yeah, I have you'll to notice say. he'll kind of change as the yeah you he's know got a lot of little it's red options. now and now it's blue. Woo! Now it's purple. <laughs> you wish you had a friend like Jay, don't you? <laughs> you little brat. <laughs> Speaking of friends of the channel, uh, where in the world is the village? Yes. This is the big homie Steven. He's also like one of the most epic narrators of all time. Yeah. Whenever we do a Bible boogie. I was like, boogie, wait, how do we know this guy? <laughs> whenever I do a Bible boogie and uh, I have uh, a, a passage that needs to be read with some feeling, it's yeah. always uh, Stephen that makes He's, it happen. He legit sounds like one of those, you know, I, I look up like Bible reading sometimes and just have it play. Yeah. He legit sounds like one of those. You listen to Max McLean and it's, it's insane. Um... So, there you go. If you would like to be featured on the channel, dear listener, you can get a shirt. You know that there's that link at the bottom of our channel, the Teespring thing. You can get a shirt, and uh, if you send us a picture, we will take a picture of you and feature you in one of our... And if you have already sent us a picture, and you're like, why am I not featured in a film yet? Resend it. That's all. <laughs> we get so many messages a day that it might have gotten buried. Yeah. So, um, speaking of which, speaking of buried... <laughs> We're actually going to talk about this is Leviathan, Leviathan at the door to the tenth level of uh, suicide. This yep. is for the big homie Damon Sage. Yes, we are it is. We, we have not completely completed Essentials Week yet, um, but this is for the big homie Damon Sage because yep. it is his birthday, and um, this is what he wanted. So, did he want to be sung to? Are we supposed to be like, you know? He's all incognito. Nobody knows anything about Damien. What the hell are you doing? This is how it can be for Damon. We'll hide oh. like he does. No. No. Uh, this Happy is... birthday to <laughs> you. you. Dum, da, da, dum. Happy birthday to you. Dum, da, da, dum. Happy birthday, dear Damien. Dum, da, da, dum. Happy birthday to you. Dum, da, da, dum. I'm pretty sure you're in one of those moods where I might be able to annoy you. Just making it <sighs> Not only is this for Damon, this is apparently... <laughs> what's that old, old guy's name? I think it's Kellandross? Yeah. It's his favorite Did band. Did you say that old guy? Yeah, it's, a, it's his favorite band. It's Kellandross. It's the old guy. It's his favorite band. So. Kellandross is old? I mean, he's... Forty-five. All right. Well, oh. let's let's listen to it at the door to the tenth sub level of suicide. Let's do it. Okay, that sounds so happy. Thank you, Damon. Go. <laughs>
Well, Damon, uh, happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I plan to uh, sing you happy birthday again next year, sir. Um, Better. So, th this band is, is interesting because lyrically I thought it was, it, it was an interesting, this guy's writing style. <clears throat> mm. I, I haven't I haven't listened to enough songs to t to talk specifically about his writing style in total, but um, on this song it was a pretty um, it was disturbing it in was. its efficiency. Yeah, it was a very disturbing. You know, it's kind of anytime people talk about like taking human life in a mechanistic sense, like, yeah, you know, like changing an engine or yeah. You know, doing an oil change or something, it's always kind of spooky. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? And so, it, but it's, it's an interest. like the first line is very brilliant, if you really think through what he's saying. The first line, now, dear listener, you probably, you know, do your best to try to remember to include the lyrics in the, uh, in the description. Oh. So that we can, uh, Reference it here. Yeah, because if you if you're not familiar with this band, you're gonna be. I mean, <laughs> lost. We were lost. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But what's interesting to me is the first line. I bid the body farewell. Yeah, because that to me sounds like he's got a idea of an afterlife. Well, and maybe not necessarily an afterlife, but what he is saying is that there's a difference between him and his body, mm -hmm. which, from a completely naturalistic perspective, isn't true. Mm -hmm. Because they say everything, your body is the sum total of everything that you are. Yeah. Um, which is, of course, if you're, if you're trying to argue against God, then you have to say that. But the problem I think people keep running into is that, you know, I, I don't know the affiliation of uh, this particular person. But it's just a very interesting idea to me when, when people talk about the body. Yeah. You know, when you're talking about a dead person. You know, they always talk about the body as if to say there's something else about that person that's mm -hmm. no longer here, and once they're dead, we're just going to refer to them as the body. Mm -hmm. But if our body is all there is, then then why why don't we refer yeah. to uh, living human beings as the body? Mm -hmm. We refer to living human beings by their name. Yeah. And we refer to dead human beings by the body. Yep. Which to me means that all of us know that there's a distinction between who we are and our body. Mm -hmm. And so this idea, you know, to your point, leads to the afterlife, but you know, it's not so much of a, as, a, as a criticism on, you know, certain belief systems or non-belief systems, but it's more like, hey, we keep, we keep having these Freudian slips mm -hmm. or these assumptions. Now a person, if they wanted to get really meta, could say, well, you know the Western world is a is a uh, you know influenced heavily by Christianity, and you know Christianity makes a distinction between you know the body and the person. Um, and these people are from the West. Uh, I don't know where they're from, but I'm assuming they're from some sort of Western country. I mean, they're not Middle Eastern. Uh -huh. I think we can safely bet that they're some probably a European band. Yeah. But I, I just think it's very, very interesting. And, you know, my, my friend Alex told me one time, he said, hey, did you know that the brain named itself? Which, of course, you would have to assume, you you know, because where else have you come up with the mm -hmm. concept of the brain? Of course, I would say that, no, the brain didn't name itself. <laughs> we called it that. And we're, we're inter, we have an interdependency between the brain and the soul. That's true. But they're not the same thing. And so... Um, it can get very complex, but it's a very interesting idea. Why? I don't, I don't see how that's wrong. I do think that the brain named itself. Well, that would mean that the brain is conscious of itself. That the brain is aware that it's there. Well, I, I mean, maybe that's what he meant by it, but I'm thinking, you know, it says that God brought the animals before Adam and he named them. So, if, like, if Adam says, oh, this is a hand, and I know it says the animals, but if he's the one that said, and uh, this thing will be called the brain. It's like that's where the idea came from to to call it brain. It was from the brain. No, I think it came from the mind, and I don't think the mind and the brain are the same thing. And why do you think it came from the mind? Because the mind is what directs our volition. Brain doesn't direct your volition. The brain is a is a control center. 
but it, it has nothing to do with, hmm. uh, you know, this is kind of the, the, the debate that we had with, that I had with Alec over a year ago. I said, what is it in your brain that determines whether or not you, I'm going to do this? Mm -hmm. And anytime somebody does something wrong, we never said your brain did that. We say you did that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if 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 the brain is some sort of active free agent mm -hmm. that is in our head that's controlling what we do, then nobody's responsible for anything they do. How could you yeah. hold them responsible? Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. So that's my point. Is that there's you know, and when you're talking about murder, you're talking about premeditated murder. You know, it's malice aforethought, mm -hmm. meaning you intended, you planned, da 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 da. So what I would say is that the mind controls the brain, which then controls the body. So hmm. the the you're not accusing a person's brain of committing crime. You're accusing them um, of committing yeah. a crime, which is yeah. th that means that there's got to be some sort of principle within you that's planning everything, mm -hmm. and it cannot be the brain <laughs> because nobody in real life. Now, when you're arguing and trying to say that there's no God, you're going to say that, but nobody in real life believes that Hitler did everything that he did because his brain made him do it. Well, yeah, it's true, because <laughs> when you think about, like, different things that they do to, like, test the brain, or the waves within the brain, you, you would be unable to do that if there was right. all this variation in brain function. But well, you can't test, like, someone's mind as much as you, you know what I mean? Like, right. like physical, like, we do this, it will do that. Like, everybody's mind is different. Right, right. And, and again, uh, the brain is not conscious it's, it's not like the brain's in there saying, it's not like I'm saying, I want to punch this guy in the face, and mm -hmm. my brain's saying, no, we don't want to do that today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, then I asked him, what is that mechanism that makes yeah. me decide to do that? And he said, well, we don't know that. And so I said, okay, well. So look, this is my point is, you know, he's, he's making a distinction between who he is and his body. Yep. And uh, so, do, so do all of us, and I would just say that that to me indicates that we know, no matter how advanced we are, we know that we're more than our bodies, mm -hmm. is my point. Mm -hmm. um, I really, of course, I don't like the subject matter of the song, mm -hmm. but I really like that line, slump down in cold history. Because if you're thinking about it in that context, it's like somebody dies, like they're... They've now become history. They've mm -hmm. they've now become part of somebody's history, and history is something that is not a it's not alive. It's not a living thing. It's looking back on what the living did. Mm -hmm. And so, when you think about it from that perspective, it's like when a person dies, they now become history in a literal sense. So, slump down and cold history is pretty crazy. I, it's funny because I was just reading these. Sometimes I get in these weird moods, mm -hmm. and so I read, you know the last words of people before they died or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of them were, were good and, and very hopeful, but one of them, this lady said, who's that man in the in black sitting in, standing in the corner of the room? And of course there was nobody there. And then the CNA said, well, describe him. And she's like, well, he's in all black. He's in a top hat and he's got red eyes. <laughs> <I was like>, <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Um, so it, it, it's, pretty spooky stuff like thinking about death and all that and you know it's the tenth song on the record at the mm -hmm. door to the tenth level sub level of suicide mm -hmm. um so it it's a really 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 interesting concept like death and, and yeah. what happens in those final moments and yeah. the rest of it um but what, what what are you thinking well I, for me the song was like um it, it was kind of methodical to me the way that it kind of like pulled you in and kind of yeah. just made you like kind of feel like he was feeling like if you say musically he was trying to bring across what he was saying verbally you can there's a real connection between the two and like I think that um, anybody who's ever been I, I don't know I can't speak for everybody I always assume when I have a certain experience that everybody's experience is like mine and then like when I'm around you like I start realizing that that's not true because you've had different experiences than me and you've been around people with lots of different experiences. So, but like for me, like when I was going through my span of being very su suicidal, um, the few times that I actually went into that, it was like, um, 
like when I was getting closer, like I would like lay and just think about it and plan it and like the planning it like felt good. Like it made me feel happy to plan that. And so, um, really? like, yeah, hmm. yeah. It like kind of like made me feel like more peaceful. And so like this song, like the music and stuff that, that was kind of like the feel, the vibe of planning. Hmm. Um, so yeah. So, so I think that I was like, well, like he did really good on that. But then at the same time, it kind of freaked me out a little bit because I was like, why is, why is Damon like this song? <laughs> So, um, and maybe, maybe, you know, he has, it's the you know, whatever, it's just the, yeah, but at the same time, are. I was just like, oh my gosh, and then when it said, um, uh, taking in my own hand a blade, a rope, bitter poison, climb into the, the Neil realm, uh, I, I was guessing that meant, like, Neilism. Yeah, like, the emptiness of yeah, death, basically. Yeah, yeah, beyond mortal pain, poison cursing through the veins, and all is end, dripping pain is fire. I just think that the way that he wrote was really good yeah and he really just captured that feeling you know what i mean like obviously if he's writing it that means that's not what he did while he was writing it you know what i'm saying right. so he was explaining what he thought it would be like well and you never know when you're listening to metal you know what i mean like if this guy is still with us you see what i'm saying yes but i'm saying when he was writing this song he was not doing that or else he wouldn't have been able to write the song he might have been thinking about it, right. and then thinking about it brought about these lyrics. But right. I, I, I think that, and the other thing too, again, this is my own experience, a lot of times when I would get like that, I would get like really darkly poetic. Mm -hmm. So like all of that was just like, oh yes. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I mean, so like I think that, I'm not sure like if this, you always say that the songs that are like that, like they'll help somebody not. Right. You know, go out and do something crazy or go kill themselves or whatever. I, I really don't know if that's true about this song. I felt a little bit uncomfortable with it in the sense of um, I wouldn't want it to be the, uh, the, the <laughs> what do you call that? Like the, you know, when you have like a song that kind of like is the, the song that, that the event happens with? Soundtrack. Yeah, soundtrack. I, I wouldn't want it to be the soundtrack for somebody's, for the end of somebody's life. But at the same time, if it was something that, you know, you're going through a dark time, I don't think people should stay in a dark time. I think that, I think that people, most people will cycle, cycle through different, um, phases and seasons in their lives. And I think that there will be dark seasons and there will be troubled waters, but, um, and you know, well, we said on the thing that we're Christians. So, I mean, like when he says, um, like the 23rd Psalm, you leave me beside still waters. And like that, that part, it's like, um, I always picture that there's, there's so much going on with the person, but that God leads them, you know, like through what's the matter. I'm, I'm listening to you. Yeah. That like God like leads them and you can be going through it. That part says that, but I always pictured that it was actually troubled waters and that God would still it and still it for the person. And so, um, like as a Christian, I I have tried other things to, to calm myself or to help myself come out of that like suicidal slump or whatever and nothing nothing worked I mean there were people that helped me like you helped me at times you know you came over and you know this is before we were together you know and so like having friendships you know like kind of helped you it eat. you'd have yeah you'd make me eat and you'd read me the psalms while I was eating and all those things were very important but at the end of the day like I really needed God to like help me you know because yeah. i was i was really troubled and so you were kind of like that temporary thing that like, was a scary time yeah but but in but it had it had to be god so um so i just sometimes like you kind of hit a point and i think that like when people hit that point of suicide you kind of feel like look i've tried everything else and it's not working so um you know some people find it really offensive like just to, to say this this line or this phrase, but like, if you've tried everything else, why don't you try Jesus? You know what I mean? Like, if people are like, ah, how dare you say try Jesus? He's not some pop drink, you know? Like, but it's just, if you're gonna go to the extreme level of killing yourself, I mean, for the heck of it. <laughs> I mean, even if I didn't believe in Santa, but people were like, Santa helped me, I'd be like, <laughs> all right, well, I'm, I, it, tomorrow, if this doesn't work, maybe, but I'm gonna at least try Santa first. So, I mean, it might sound crazy to try to, you know, no, I think I reach think, into the unknown. But I think that that's that's very well put because at the end of the day, 
both are acts of faith. So if you say, I'm in a ton of pain, I'm gonna kill myself. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're banking on the idea that you're gonna wake up in a place that is not as painful as mm -hmm. this world, or you're banking on the idea that you're not gonna wake up, period. Mm -hmm. But how can you know that? Right, right. Um, and the same thing with Christianity. How can you know? Well, you've got to take it by faith, right? And, you know, there's, there are, I mean, I can argue, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. right? There, there, you know, you can argue the resurrection and yeah. predict the blah, blah, yeah. blah. But to me, it's like, yeah, you know, death is a very, very extreme, you know, we always talk about suicide as being a, a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm -hmm. And... A lot of assumptions are being made when people when people go in that direction. Yeah, you know, you're you're assuming that that's going to be the end of your uh, of your um, anguish and mental, yeah, yeah, whatever. Now, sometimes and so, you feel like it can't get worse than this. Like, there's no, it's possible. Yeah, but. yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, but it's very well put. It's like, hey, if you're going to go to that extreme, you might as well, um, you know. <laughs> Throw in with us. Throw in, <laughs> throw in with us. We have cookies. We have yep. corn. Yes, I'm corn. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Couple members of corn are Christian. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a it's a very um, that's such a good point. You know, like hey, if you're gonna go to that extreme, so Merry Christmas, I mean, <laughs> Happy Birthday, Damon. Um, yeah, puncture this vessel with me. Yeah, I agree with you. This is this is not a song. You know, like corn, Slipknot. You know, yeah. they, they've got songs that talk about suicide, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. I think the thing with me about this song that was disturbing was it kind of hung out there and it was kind of grinding and it was kind of was there long. wasn't really a lot of let up, which I think yeah. the instrumentation and all that was kind of used to communicate the drudgery of living for a person who's yep. suffering from the severe yep. depression. And unless you've and actually style. You know, I got diagnosed with major depression. You know, I had bipolar in my family and stuff, but I got diagnosed with major depression. So, it the, the biggest thing for me was it just it, when I was at the like the pinnacle of of dealing with it was getting out of bed was so hard yeah. and discouraging. Like walking, mm -hmm. you know, getting something to eat, those types of things yeah. was just was just it took so much out of me mm -hmm. to even see another person mm -hmm. TV I could see but like a real life flesh and blood person like it took so much out of mm -hmm. me to even look at them mm -hmm. much less talk to them it was crazy so like unless you know what that's like it, but the, the the way the song was and the tempo and the chords and everything mm -hmm. it just oh, kind of yeah. communicated <laughs> that kind of drudgery that mm -hmm. I used to feel you know um, and Praise God! Like obviously, I, I I'm all, probably always for the rest of my life going to struggle with depression, but it was never like that. Mm -hmm. After that whole experience and everything, like um, God did a did a lot of really cool stuff with me, and and you know I've been working with the boys, you know, and on Bible study we, we've got our man time is what the <laughs> they the boys the call man it. Time. So every Friday <laughs> night we uh, do man time and we open up the Bible, and it, it's been really cool to be able to tell the kids like. To tell the boys, like, you're going to go through some shit, fellas. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, this shit runs in your family. So um, the chances of you waking up and being a spring chicken and being all happy and shit are very, very low. They're not impossible, but they're low. But, but I told them, I said, you know, there's not a lot of guarantees here mm -hmm. in life. But I can tell you that when you really need him, he's going to come for you. You know, as Isaiah talks mm -hmm. about, you know, before you call, I will, before you call, I will answer <laughs> So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I said, that's one thing I can guarantee you, fellas, is that he's coming for you, mm -hmm. you know, and he's going to come and he's going to come and save you, but you got to, you got to hold on, you know? That's a weird thing with God, like, where you, you have like this relationship with him and then you're like, you feel like you're literally, you know, going through hell with a certain thing in your life. And you're asking him, like, are you there? Like, what are you doing? Like, can't you fix this? Like, what's going on? And, like, it feels like he's not there. It feels like he's not listening. And it's, like, so discouraging. And But, like, there's a part of you that's like, well, I know that he's, he's there, but I don't know. I'm questioning a lot. And then, like, you get out of that, like, 
season, that really, really hard time. And then you look back and you're like, oh, wait, no, he was there. Like, why could, why didn't, why couldn't I see that when I was in the middle of that? And God does so speak obvious. Yeah. in one way and two, though man does not perceive, perceive it. it. By the way, shout out to the big homie, Tim Eubanks. Um, uh, did you, did you reach out to him? Anybody? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, Yesterday we should check. We're working on some really, really exciting stuff that I'm very, very happy about. Um, I think you guys can like it. I yeah, I I agree. I think I think there's going to be a lot of really um, yeah, it's very interesting. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so you know, I I think obviously the vocal style hurt the song for me because we were follow you know we usually follow along with the lyrics. And I couldn't even find where they were, <laughs> even with the help. Um, the person could say, well, that says more about you and the, the lyrics, Vin. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'll concede that to you, whatever you want to say, but you get my point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually that vocal style, I'm like, mm-hmm. but this song, I felt like it was extremely fitting. And that picture of that man dragging himself through that darkness, it looks like he's in a dark hole. You know, like it looks like he's trying to climb out of something. Yeah, it's just like whoa, like he's just oh man. So for me, the vocal style was like perfect. I felt like if if you were to communicate that picture through voice and music, that <laughs> captures it. Yeah, no, I, I I agree. It's just when you're singing, I want to know what you're saying. You know, and, and like when I could see it on the thing, I even, could see it. But even, then if I lost it, yeah. Even like, when I was looking at the lyrics, I was I was lost. But you know, yeah. I mean, I I hear you. You you kind of get used to it after a while. I mean, it, you know, you had you had about 15 minutes to get used to it. And this is the last song on the record, so I'm pretty sure if you're listening to Leviathan, then yeah. You know, I mean, I normally I have to get used to it. This one I did not have to get used to it. And like I said, like I've been in these situations where I felt like this. And that was like, that to me, like, just depicted that voice, that feeling inside. And just like what, for me, it it captured it perfectly. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I don't want to, so like, topic wise, like, I don't want anybody to kill themselves. And I don't want anyone to listen to this song and it make it worse for them or whatever. So for that, like, I would give it like a negative 50,000. But like, like overall, like, I, I think it's like a 10. I think they really, really communicate themselves well. I think musically, vocally, lengthwise, everything. Like I think it all communicated the same message extremely well. So, so I'm I'm gonna go with like a nine point eight, nine point eight for me. Solid nine point eight. Uh, it's a nine for me. I hear what you're saying about the vocals. I still think he could have um, accomplished that goal with a little bit more clarity. Um, sonically. Again, it was it was kind of you know dragging you down into the mm-hmm. you know, but it was it was kind of meant to do that. So it's not something that I could say that I liked in the sense of ooh, I like this, but it wasn't meant to be liked. Mm-hmm. Like this is not a oh, they're really gonna love this one type of song. <laughs> this one's going on the Christmas soundtrack. Well, I, I just think that bands kind of are aware of that. I think I think bands know, oh, this is this will pop live. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've I've heard Jonathan say that in interviews. Like they they're aware, oh, this is you know, this is gonna pop live. Yep. But I think this song, I think there are also other songs where they're just like, I'm just writing this for me. It's not really gonna pop on a live show. Yeah. It's not gonna be a song where you're you're ever gonna say I enjoy this. You know what I mean? Like. But it communicates. It, it communicates what was in it. yeah, and that and I think that that's what needs to be communicated. Yeah, and that's all. the thing. Like if you're if you're into music and you're you're putting your stuff out there, there might be some songs that you know that's not gonna be a radio song. That's not gonna be like you said one that you're gonna do there. But but you have to put out what's in your heart or what you're going through. Yeah, I think that's important. So I just hope that you know nobody in this band is dead. I know. <laughs> But uh, anyway, happy birthday to Damon Sage. Just a just a word about Damon Sage. Damon, <clears throat> kind of when we went to the second phase of the the channel, um, when you know we went from kind of being you know hobby horse YouTubers to mm-hmm. you know professional YouTubers. Yep. Damon has been very 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 instrumental in keeping us professional. Yes. And we've got a team of people. Well. So, like, Damon, he's super quiet, you know, and, like, we have these meetings, and 
so Peter got me hooked up with Trello to really help stuff stay organized, but I actually, I like needed help. I needed somebody to like jump in there and just like start adding stuff in to keep yeah. stuff organized and stuff. And like, I knew I was in over my head with it. Like I thought it was a great idea. I just knew I wasn't going to be able to do all of that yeah. uh, on top of everything else that we do. And so I was like, Damon, would you like do that? <laughs> and then I just kind of like threw it out there and he was so quiet that I was like, oh no, he doesn't want to do this. He's feeling pressured. And he was like, yeah, I mean, I can do it. Like it was like no big thing. And so I really don't know how big of a deal it is for him, but I know it's a huge deal for us that he helps us out with that. So, you know, every time I load up and like the link is there, the name of the song is there, everything's there, it's coded, it's color, but it's everything is like down to, you know, exactly exactly what we need um I, it's and, just it's he, it, it's been such a huge help he never asks for anything he never because no. a lot of times people especially if you're doing something like this you know people will try to jump on to to take part in your success or whatever but damon damon's just trying to keep everything level he's organizational he's a liaison mm -hmm. between us and um hundreds of people like it's mm -hmm. just you know it's yeah it's uh and he rarely he never this is the first favor he's actually asked mm -hmm. you know um he 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 just does his work does his thing and then he you know i mean no pressure damon if you're like shoot i was gonna tell them next week i'm not doing that stupid <laughs> trello anymore that's fine we're just talking what you've done up until now has been amazing and we appreciate every bit of it so yeah don't yeah. feel any pressure to Right. A, don't feel any pressure. And B, you know, if you see us, you know, it's not just us. Like, we've got a team of people from, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to mention. The only reason I'm not mentioning other things, I want to send her Damon mm -hmm. because it's his birthday. But we've got a hell of a lot of people on our team yeah. that um, that make this thing go. Mm -hmm. and well, but the thing about Damon. We, we wouldn't be where we are without <laughs> Without those guys, particularly it's, Damon. Uh, different than everybody else. I, I still have not seen Damon. Right. So he's like this this character of like, what is that thing with the horns? He's really, uh, huh? His picture. It's like that thing with those horns. Yeah, what is that? Mephisto. Yeah. That's all. I, when I think Damon, that's all. I, I literally don't know what he looks like. Damon's like one of the... Damon, Damon, <laughs> honestly, he's like Slipknot at the beginning of, at the beginning, Slipknot wore masks, they didn't talk a lot, that, yeah. that, they really kept that, that thing going, and he's kind of like that. So we have other people that help us, although we could recognize them in the crowd. Damon could literally, like, walk right up to us, and we would have no clue it was him. He probably has. <laughs> he's you probably, welcome, idiot. He's dumb butts. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I just, you know, it's, uh. We're very, very privileged to have the type of people. Yeah, yeah. In our in our community, it's mm -hmm. been they've been you know it's, it's been pretty it's been pretty special. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do things that you know we do things a little bit different, and we run things a little bit different than the average. And you know sometimes it's it's not always pretty. But anyway, we love the guy. Mm -hmm. That's one hundred percent. So shout out to you. Shout out to the big homie Damon. And stage. let us know next year on your birthday, and we'll do another song. Fucking get something happy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta pray for Damon. We'll get saved. He'll he'll ask for a Hillsong song next yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, I've got some great ones I can show you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, much love to the big homie. Vin out. Story out. Gone. <laughs>